there. Thanks for joining us on The Sweet Spot. It's the Racing Post's weekly golf show with me, Bruce Millington. And this week, we've got James Mason, my Racing Post colleague. It's all about the European Tour. We will review the European Masters last week and we'll look ahead to the Irish Open, which is the only event taking place this week with the PGA Tour in America on its little holiday. But first of all, we need to get stuck into the Ryder Cup, James, because Luke Donald named his six wildcard picks yesterday in one of the most elongated ceremonies of all time. But we got there in the end. And controver- there was always going to be, not controversy, but there was always going to be a couple of difficult choices for Donald. And I suppose it kind of boils down to Moronk versus Nikolai Hogard. He went with Hogard. Uh, is that how you sit in terms of controversy? There's some people saying, well, Shane Lowry was lucky to get in there. What do you make of it all? Yeah, I, I mean, it's always like it's always going to be hard for a captain. There's always going to be people that agree with him and people that don't agree with him. I think you have to back Donald's sort of, you know, how he's looked into this and the team that he's got. I do think Moronk is probably be, you can feel a little bit hard done by, by not being involved in this team. Purely the fact that he won at this venue this year. Obviously, Hoygaard has won there back in 2021, I think it was. So that probably helped him. I think it was just Hoygaard was showing a little bit more consistent form towards his last few events where Moronki was up there and then he fell away a little bit on the last round on Sunday, didn't he, in Switzerland. So uh, I think for me, Shane Lowry is probably the one who is the fortunate player to get a pick because he's not really shown much form recently. He's been getting sort of top 20s, top 30s, something like that, but he's, he's not really been up there at the top of the leaderboard in the mix. I think it's the fact he's maybe got a bit of experience of playing in a Ryder Cup and obviously he's a, he's a major champion. He's helped him get in there. So for me, Lowry can probably count himself lucky. His world ranking suggests he's worth a place. So I think he's still in the 30s, whereas the others are a lot bigger. I mean, I can't see that the Americans would be punching the air in delight that Adrian Moronk's not on the team. Against that, as some, someone pointed out, well, you know, he's supported the European Tour. He's played hard on the European Tour and it's a bit of a snub and makes you wonder why they don't all just uh, get over to America as soon as they can. I suppose one of the complications was that uh, um, Ludwig Eberg obviously won on Sunday and he's so progressive and obviously so talented. I mean, you know, this time last year, very few people had heard of him um, and there will still be some casual golf watchers who are like, hang on, who's this Ludwig Eberg guy? But you know, he's he's pretty much made himself a must pick, hasn't he? It's not, it's not really a guy. It's not like a Theo Walcott in 2006 from Sven Gamble, is it? I mean, he, he just looks like it's the sort of thing where if you didn't pick him, you look back next year when he's, you know, potentially won a major and has just proved himself to be unbelievable. So can you believe Luke Donald didn't pick him? So I suppose he had to go, didn't he? Yeah, I think he had to go. I mean, it's it's win-win from Aberg's perspective because if he goes there and he plays really well and gets the points, fine, fantastic. And if he doesn't, then it goes back on Donald to say, well, that was a silly pick. But for Aberg, it's like he was a rookie. He's young. He's only been a professional, what, three months? I think it was June. He turned mm-hmm. from amateur to professional. I mean, it's the quickest anyone's ever gone from amateur to professional to then representing their team in the Ryder Cup. The other one before that was Sergio Garcia when he was 1999, when he represented Europe in the Ryder Cup. But it was when after the Masters, when he shot the lowest amateur round, he then turned professional. So what was that around six, five, five months, something like that, five, six months when he was on the Ryder Cup team. But Aberg, you have to just look at what he's been doing recently. And it was that victory in the European Masters just absolutely rubber stamped it. I think he would have got in anyway. Um, it had he not won that, had to have a decent finish. But because he won it and how he performed over that last round as well on the back nine, you know, you're thinking he's going to slip away from it. And then he suddenly went four birdies in his last five holes. That is just what you want for a Ryder Cup player. Donald said he's a generational talent, he's a generational player. And he actually challenged him. So Dolan played with him over on the PGA Tour. Um, I can't remember which tournament it was now. It was a second tournament as a professional. And Donald said to right, come over to the DP World Tour and show us what you can do. And exactly what Aberg did. He came over and he played and he performed. Mm. Slightly worrying on the flip side there that although Aberg came through with that steely finish to win it, that... Um that it was such a tame effort from Matt Fitzpatrick on Sunday, wasn't it? I mean, he was, you know, he had the tournament in his grasp and for a player ranked eight in the world to bogey three of the last four and fall away is quite tame and pretty disappointing. I mean, it's hard to say of a, of a major champion that, you know, he has difficulty getting over the winning line, but we have seen this before from Fitzpatrick, haven't we? I, I mean, I, I'd speak from my pocket as much as anything else, but he, he, he is capable of a pretty feeble finish, isn't he, at times? 
he is, and that is the worry. He was playing very defensive golf on that Sunday. He was just seemed like he was trying to protect the lead, and it was like he was waiting for players to try and come up behind him. And it's exactly what happened. Players were putting a challenge in. Fitzpatrick wasn't making the birdies. Um, and when he starts to get a little bit worried or a little bit nervous, he tends to put the snap hook in a little bit, which is what he was doing towards the end. He was just pulling it left off the tee, not giving, not putting himself in the right positions. The, the worry for me with Fitzpatrick is, yes, he's on the Ryder Cup team, but he's not won a point, any kind of point for Europe at the Ryder Cup, Fitzpatrick. He's, he's really? not done it. Yeah, he's, he's not he's not won a Ryder Cup point. Uh, yeah. The two that the two that he's played in, obviously um, Europe have got absolutely battered in those two that he's played in. So he's not won a Ryder Cup point. And I suppose he's more of a, a more complete player now. He's a major champion. But I say in a major champion, you'd have expected him to see out that victory on Sunday at a course that he's already won twice at. So that 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 is a big worry, I think, for Fitzpatrick going into it. Um, you'd say he's probably somebody good to partner with at the Ryder Cup because he's quite a steady player. You know, we know he's going to find his fairway. So I think when it comes to comes to foursomes he might be somebody that'll play quite a lot maybe not four walls mm, interesting i must say i was very pleased for bob mcintyre james because you know he's been on the Ryder cup trail pretty much the whole year he's absolutely i say flogged his guts out it's only playing golf isn't it but i mean he's played week after week and you can tell he's really put his heart and soul getting onto the team so i think for him to qualify like that i, I was really pleased because you look how many times he, he turned up and he gave it his all. And, you, you know, I remember seeing an interview that he did mid-round with Tim Barter and it was clear the pressure was telling on him. So nice story that, that Bob McIntyre got in there for his Ryder Cup debut. Yeah, it made it a lot of an easy decision as well for Donald. So if McIntyre had missed out, that would have been really hard for Donald to basically say, oh, do I give you a captain's pick or not? But I think, yeah, it's good because he's he's put in the hard yards, like you said, on the DP World Tour. He's, he's played pre- predominantly on this side of the pond. So it's it's good to see. Good that he's in there. I mean, there, there's some really interesting sort of uh, prices and markets when I look around sort of like for the top team point scorers for both teams because you look at the USA side and you look at some of the rookies that are in there. Oh, sorry, not rookies. Um, Wildcard picks, the captain's picks. Colin Morikara is one of them. And he was superb in the last Ryder Cup. He's 10 to 1 to be the top team point scorer for the USA. He was partnered with Justin Johnson for all of his pairs matches. And then he tied his singles match as Morikawa. But you look at some of the others in there. Max Homer is another one at 12 to 1. He'll be paired with somebody there. Scheffler's 17 to 4 is the favourite. I'm not so sure on Scheffler because he didn't partner well at the President's Cup. He, he was partnered a lot of the time with Sam Burns. Sam Burns has obviously been picked for this one, so those two may be paired up again, or they may not be, because they didn't do very well at the President's Cup last year in terms of their pairs matches. There's there's a lot of fascinating matchups, I think, in for Europe. McElroy, another one would maybe with the Lowry pick, is because McElroy and Lowry, there's rumours that they could be paired together, so that could be like a, a big partnership for Europe. Rahm, who's he going to be partnered with? Will he be, will he be someone like Aberg or, or Hoygaard? There, there's just so many fascinating matchups I think you could have. It's really really interesting is there any sort of nailed on matchups for either side that you think well they'll definitely play together i mean would it be spieth and thomas for instance you know cantlay and show potentially i think we, we've seen a few of those kind of friendship partnerships in the past haven't we yeah, yeah, I think you're right on those two, Cantley and Shuffle and uh, Thomas and Spieth. I think Thomas is also he was obviously a con- controversial captain's pick, but I think there's a few players in there that would have been sort of flying the flag for him. And Spieth and Thomas, we've seen they partnered up really well over recent sort of Presidents Cup, Ryder Cup. So those two will be those two pairs. I think they'll be absolutely nailed on. I, th- I think McIlroy and Larry will be nailed on. Um, I'm trying to look at some of the other ones for Europe in. Hovland, I think, will probably feature in most of the sessions. But again, oh, he'll play them all, won't he? He'll play them all. Him, Rahm and Mackerel will play five, won't they? They, they, they probably will. Um, but Hovland, again, I know is is his, his rookie Ryder Cup in 2021, but he didn't fare very well in his pairs matches. Yeah, don't worry about that. He's just, that. Look, I mean, he's just won the last two tournaments and he's just won about a billion pounds. He, he plays every he plays every game, no question about it. One thing I did think was very interesting, actually, James, was that. This time last week when Steve and I were talking about the Ryder Cup, it was 4-6 to six the USA and 6-4 to four Europe. It's now 4-5 to five USA, 5-4 to four Europe. I mean, are they getting backable now at 4-5, to five, the Americans? Um, 
I'm not sure. I mean, looking at the two teams. Feel free to say no. Yeah, I mean, I'm going, to, I'm going to say no. I'm just looking at the two teams and looking. I know everyone's saying, look at all that talent that's in that American side. But I mentioned Europe with Fitzpatrick not winning a point, but. Um, USA have got Ricky Fowler in there. He's not got a great Ryder Cup record. He's, he's won three matches of his Ryder Cup career, so that's not many. I think he's lost 11 of them. You've got Brian Harmon in there as a rookie. How's he going to fare? Max Holm is in as a rookie for the Ryder Cup as well. It's There's, there's loads of players in there where you I think fa- well, uh, I, pressure. I fancy Harmon. I think Harmon will be brilliant. I think he has got the minerals. I really, really do. I thought he's absolutely... 40 I mean, to, 40 so to 1, mate. if you fancy that, Bruce. 40 to 1. That he'll well, be the top team point scorer. He just, he just won't wonder if he's going to play in all the sessions you want someone that you know is going to be you know playing in most of those that's going to be paired mm-hmm. all the time but to be fair Harmon's a steady player and he's probably exactly someone you'd like for foursomes definitely that's what I was going to say well. you'd want to play with Brian Harmon he's gutsy he's accurate and he's a terrific putter so I, I, I think that I think there's every chance and he's also in the Zach Johnson mould isn't he he's that kind of player so I've got a feeling he'll be rooting for him so what price did you say is Brian Harmer? Oh, forty to one. I can have forty some of that. to one. He, yeah, he's, he's, the, he's the rank outsider for for the mm. USA. He's the rank outsider when you look at all of the top team point scorer. But there's also the little caveat for USA of Brooks Kepka being in there and. What's the feeling with Kepka? Obviously, still being part of Live. Um, did he burn any bridges with some of the players that he knew on the PGA Tour? Who's he going to play with? Who wants to play with him? It's 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 a difficult one. He's he's not quite in the mould of who's going to partner Patrick Reed when Patrick no. Reed was in the Ryder Cups, but he's still got that bit of edge about him. And he's he's just a very laid back character. I say this because I've been watching. Um, watching full swing Good, uh, so isn't I'm, it? I'm t- yeah towards the end of full swing now but watching the Kepka episode and he's, he's just not someone who gives out that much emotion and you feel like you could do with that sometimes if you're paired with him you need somebody to keep you g'd up mm, yeah interesting okay let's uh, just wrap up the European Masters I must say I feel a bit of a fraud today because I didn't actually watch any golf I was away last week but I obviously saw the result and saw Aberg got it done Fitzpatrick collapsed Steve's tip um Alexander Bjork, he, he missed out just about and he got done for a penalty shot, I believe, didn't he, for taking a preferred lie on days when they weren't allowed. So that was a little bit unlucky. Uh, anything else catch your eye from Cron Sercier, James? Um, I suppose Nikolai Hoygaard just had a he had a big finish to his back nine. He he was struggling a little bit. He wasn't doing very well. And then kind of like Aberg, when Aberg birdies for his last five, uh, Hoygaard went eagle birdie par. He went bogey par but I think it was that eagle birdie little stretch where obviously Luke Donald was watching and some of the vice captains were watching thinking yeah that's that's kind of what we need he's, he's got that power he's got that driving ability um, so I think that was a good one to see um, apart from that again it's just it's just Adrian Moronk really just you'd feel a little bit disappointed tied 13th he finished but it was it was in that little back nine stretch as well where he went birdie then he got to the first of the two back to back par fives and then he went double bogey that, I think, absolutely killed it for him. If he'd made birdie eagle, finished strongly, who knows, he could have got the edge. But I think just because Hoygaard finished higher than him and a better finish, that's why he got it. Yeah, he didn't really put much pressure on him, did he? He didn't give Donald, like, sleepless night on Sunday night, did he, there? So. I, I, suppose, I suppose you feel for Yannick Paul as well. There's one last point on that. Oh, because... come on. Why? Yannick Paul? But ju- God, just purely because Yannick Paul in the Ryder Cup. But, but oh. purely for the fact everyone's saying, oh, it's great for McIntyre being in there. He, he's, he's worked really hard this season. I mean, Paul was only he was marginal points behind uh, Bob McIntyre in the okay, European fair points. Enough. No, you he, are he, right. He did. He turn was up fourth. Up. Yeah. So it's, it's, okay. it, it, on that aspect, you say it's it's difficult for him. But I suppose he, he's not that kind of star play you'd maybe want. No, no, absolutely not. No, I must say, I'm, I'm fairly glad, and I'm sure everyone is, that Yannick Paul didn't qualify. But uh, who knows? Maybe he'll come out in a future Ryder Cup and prove himself to be an absolute star. Right then, let's look ahead to this week's tournament then. It's the Irish Open at the K Club. Terrific field, headlined by Rory McIlroy. Here's the latest betting. Uh, McIlroy is a very warm favourite, as you'd imagine, 7-2. to two. And then we've got Tyrrell Hatton at 10, Shane Lowry 20, Minwoo Lee 20, Adam Scott 20, Adrian Moronk with a point to prove 25, Aaron Rye 28, Bjork is 30, Ryan Fox 35, along with Billy Horschel and Jordan Smith, and it's 40 bar. So an excellent field. James, tell us all about the course, what it's like, who it might favour, what the weather's like. Is this lovely sunshine going to make it a glorious, blissful week in Ireland? How many runners, etc.? 
Yeah, don't worry. I've got the weather forecast in here. Uh, I've been, I missed it out last time when I was on this, but I've got that in because it does make a difference, obviously, um, in Ireland in this, those kind of courses. But the K Club, yeah, the second time it's hosted the Irish Open. The last time or the first time was in 2016. That was in Roy McIlroy won by three shots. He eagled the last hole just to rubber stamp that victory. It's also staged the 2006 Ryder Cup. I think a lot of people will fondly remember it because it was Darren Clark's very emotional uh, week performance that week. I mean, Europe trounced the USA, 18 and a half, nine and a half. So, you know, they have fond memories of this one. It's a big few years for the K Club as well, actually, because they're hosting the Irish Open in 2025 and 27 as well. They've also got the Irish Challenge Tour in 2024 and 26. So, you know, it's a big few years for them keeping the course in pristine condition. Arnold Palmer designed a Parkland course. This is the north course that they're playing. There's two courses, the north and the south, but they're playing the north. Plenty of water that comes into play on this course several holes i've played it i can in. vouch for that <laughs> i mean it's got it's got a lot of water it's got a lot of bunkers thick rough to deal with as well it's got i think for me it's got similarities to the belfry in terms of um water dominates quite a lot of the miles course. better course miles yeah. better course i like the belfry um well i like four or five holes of the belfry but i think the Bel- belfry is grossly overrated i think this but i take your point about the um the drink yeah, but um, par 72, this one is 7,350 yards. You've got 10 par fours, four par fives. Two of those come in the last three holes and four par threes. Weather forecast for this one, it's set to be mild throughout the tournament. Thursday and Friday, you've got overcast, but there's no rain. Winds are relatively low. Similar on Saturday in terms of how it's uh, temperature-wise, but the wind is set to pick up a little bit in the afternoon. And then Sunday, that's where there's a mild chance of rain. But the winds, this is where they're meant to get up in the afternoon, around sort of 12, 15 miles per hour, potentially. Actually, again, they're not massive, but overall... Nothing for Ireland. Yeah, overall, I think these are decent conditions uh, for the Irish Open. Obviously, mentioned McIlroy won in 2016. Two glaring stats when I looked at his victory were driving accuracy and greener regulations. They were both really ranked really high in those. He didn't actually put fantastically, but he still managed to get the job done. Some of the players in behind him, Russell Knox, the Scotsman, he's another sort of steady Eddie, you know, strong fairway finder. Uh, Matthew Southgate were in there as well. Tyrrell Hatton was close behind. So uh, there's a variety of players. I think McElroy obviously showing his power works there. And if he gets the accuracy right, he's going to be hard to beat. But if he's slightly off course, then it brings some of the other players into, into the equation. And how many go to post? 100, or sorry, 156. 156. They'll have to go well to pack them in because obviously we're losing the light these days. I don't know. The weather's absolutely glorious, but uh, it's getting darker a lot earlier. OK, right then. Looking forward to a great week. Like I say, loads of big names. I'm sure the crowds will be out in force and a lot of them cheering for McElroy. Uh How many selections have you got, James? Got four selections today. Right, you are. And are you tipping Rory McElroy? I'm not tipping Roy McRoy. I'm, right I'm, st- I'm, I'm staying away completely from the sort of top of the market, really. Oh, right then. Interesting. Who's going to be the main selection? Main selection is Torborn Ollison at 55 to 1. You can get him. Now, the Danes rediscovered his form over the past couple of years. It was a tough few years for him post-2018 Ryder Cup on and off the course, but he's won the Thailand Classic this year. That was his seventh DP World Tour title. He's had another three top fives and four top tens this season, so he's playing really consistent golf. And in terms of looking at, you know, solid tee to green players. He's seventh in strokes gained in that category. He's 14th in green to regulation, third in strokes gained total. So he's doing well in all those kind of aspects. Now, I mentioned before that McElroy didn't, you know, didn't put the lights out of it when he won in 2016. Um, but Ollison has been great on the greens. He's 10th in puts for green and, leg, uh, green and regulation, 15 in strokes game putting. So his all around game at the moment looks really, really good. Uh, he was 10th on this course in 2016 as well when he made his debut at it. So that's a really good thing to note as well. And again, I mentioned sort of similarities to the Belfry in terms of how water dominates it. There's hazards, traps around there. Ollison won the British Masters in 2022 at the Belfry. And I think you can have some similarities between the K Club and the Belfry. So I think that bodes quite well that Ollison's won on a course like that. Lovely. Torby and Ollison at 55 to 1 is James Mason's headline selection. Let us know who you fancy, by the way, in the comments. If you enjoy the show, we'd love you to subscribe, share, comment. And what's the other one? I can't remember. There's four, but never mind. Uh, Like, comment. (laughs) Yeah, like, comment, subscribe and share. That's it. Yeah, brilliant. Right then. Okay, who is the second tip? 
Second pick is uh, Jordan Smith at 35 to 1. Now, he's shown some decent form of late, actually. He was tied 12th at the Scottish Open, tied 20th last week at the European Masters. The issue for Smith this season, it's why he's not added to his two DP World Tour titles, has been the putter. He's losing shots in quite a lot of putting categories. So that doesn't bode that well when you look at it all around. But I'm willing to give him a chance here just for the fact that I expect the putter will start to come good, purely down to the fact as well that he hits so many greens and he gives himself lots of looks at birdies. It will turn at one stage. And I mentioned before, McElroy didn't rank particularly well in putting when he won here in 2016. So I think it shows there's a little bit of leeway on the greens. And I just think Smith, he, he leads in greens and regulation. He's unrivaled in that department this season. He's third in strokes gained tee to green and he's 10th in drive and accuracy. You know, getting to the green is absolutely no problem for him. It's just when he's on them. But I think the fact as well that his, his results are picked up over his past few outings, mentioned the tied 12th, tied 20th, there must be a little bit more confidence with the flat stick in hand now. So I just think at 35 to 1, he's definitely someone who should suit this course. Excellent. Third selection. Third selection is uh, Maximilian Kiefer at 90 to 1. He's dropped off a little bit uh, since he had a couple of top fives, but he didn't play in Switzerland last week. And I think that's a bit of time for him to refresh, take stock. It could serve him quite well. He returns to the K Club as well, where he was fifth here in 2016. So he has previous course form. He's an accurate driver of the German. That's been shown this season, even though he's maybe not been picking up the results recently. He's 21st in strokes gained T to green. That's a, a big factor that I've looked at here. Um, another good factor is his ranking of 14th in par 5 scoring. I mentioned there's four on the course and there's two in the last three holes. I think that could really play to his strengths and it could it could make up for a fascinating finish, I think, with those two par 5s in the last three holes, whether players go for it, you know, whether they hit the drink. I think it'll be a fantastic finish to each round. But yeah, Kiefer at 90-1, to one, I think he could have just been overlooked slightly in the betting. Does he adhere um, strictly to the Maximilian or is he really max? I think it's probably Max. I yeah. I, I, always, I always go for the uh, the, the, the it's probably full, one of those ones where basis. he filled in his full name when he first started out, and he's been stuck with it ever since, you know. But um, yeah, I'm, he's I'm down. Pretty... He's down as Maximilian Kiefer on on all the betting outlets, mm. betting sites. But I think everyone just yeah. go for go for Max with him. I reckon so. OK, and we've got one more tip. Who is? Uh, Fabrizio Zanotti at a hundred and twenty. 25 to 1. Bigger odds for this one, but something just seems to have clicked for Zanotti over his last two outings. He was tied fourth at the Czech Masters and he was tied 24th last week in Switzerland. So the confidence is, is getting bigger, it's higher, and I think he can keep that momentum going. Now, the Paraguayan, he fits the bill for me for being an accurate driver. He's seventh in driving accuracy. And then you look at the other stats as well. He's eighth in greens and regulation, so he's hitting the green more often than not. He's 11th in strokes gained tee to green. It's the putting stats, kind of like Smith, that have been, haven't been great this season, but they have improved over his last two appearances. You know, he's been gaining strokes ever so slightly in his last two tournaments. So there's a feeling for me that he's got the rhythm back with the flat stick. You look at it, his previous Irish Opens, he missed the cut here in 2016, but I'm willing to forego that. But he was second, seventh and fourth in three other previous Irish Opens. So, you know, he has the game to compete on these type of courses. And I just think he, he's quite big odds to me, 125 to one. He's someone that could definitely give you an each way run for your money. Interesting. Um, what price would Rory have had to be before you considered tipping him? Um... I would have liked maybe eight, eight to one. Oh, you're never going to get that. <laughs> I know, but that's why I, I, I very rarely go in on the favourites just because I think there's so many different sort of uh, you know, parts of, of a game of golf and, and the tournament. You know, he's up against 155 other players. There's a very good chance that someone is going to light it up. And I just think, what has he set seven to two, McElroy? Mm. And that's just way too short for a golf tournament for me. You wouldn't, even if he wins it by 12 shots, you wouldn't be kicking yourself that you missed out on the seven to two, no? No, I wouldn't. I wouldn't. I would. I think I'd be okay to let that one go. I'm, I'm definitely. If if you get a bigger price for me, and if they if they run into a place, I, you know that sometimes gives me a bit more satisfaction than back in a seven to two shot. Excellent. Good stuff, James. Let's reiterate your four tips for the Iron Show, which starts on Thursday. Yes, we've got Tiobo and Olison, Jordan Smith, Max Kiefer, and Fabrizio Zanotti. Marvelous. Have you got your running order up, James? Because I've forgotten what next week's tournaments are. Uh, I did have it. Uh, We're three weeks away from the Ryder Cup. Join oh, us it's, on um, the... Oh, go on. 
we're over to France. Uh, it's the uh, Open Open de France, I think it is. Oh, okay. uh, Call it the French Open, if you like. Yeah, so K- Kazoo, Kazoo Open de France. It's at Le Golf National, where the 2018 Ryder Cup was. Um, Lovely stuff. I, I, frantically scrolling through uh, <laughs> of the page list then. And then, obviously, it's, it's the Ryder Cup uh, the, the week after that. So, no, no, we've got uh, two weeks next. Uh, we've got next week's France. The Ryder oh, Cup sorry. Is, oh, Ryder Cup. No, then yeah, we've got sorry. another week. Ryder Cup is actually finishes on October the 1st this year. Yeah, no, so I've, well. I've, I've scrolled too quickly. Sorry, it's the BMW PJ Championship. It's the flagship event yeah, of the DP World Tour. That's next week. Then it's the Open to France after that. Then it's the Ryder Cup. What a fantastic September we've got of golf. So do make sure you stick with the sweet spot every Tuesday. Steve and I will be back next week. James, good luck with your tips. Thank you very much indeed. Thanks as ever to producer Will. And most of all, thank you, our lovely sweet spot audience. Don't forget, let us know your fans this week. Hit that thumbs up button and join us next Tuesday for another sweet spot. <laughs> <laughs>